So yesterday we talked about the auto ionization of water and how we have the molecular geometry of a bent molecule of water. When it comes into contact with just the right orientation with another water molecule, the right kinetic energy causes the bond to break where it releases a proton. This hydrogen, when it causes that bond to break, it causes that hydrogen to then join with this other water, which then attaches to the electron domain of an oxygen. On the, and the other water molecule then is left with just the OH. So when we have water plus water, and again, they have to collide at just the right kinetic energy, just the right orientation to cleave this bond. So then we have H3O plus, and we're left with an OH minus. This is known as hydronium ion and is represented by having that additional proton. And we have hydroxide ion showing the loss of the proton. And therefore we have our acid base ions. Our hydronium ion is known as our acid. Our hydroxide ion is known as our base. This is our acid base ions. And if we think about the equilibrium of this setup, we do our products over our reactants. So we have the concentrations of our hydronium times our concentration of our hydroxide ions. And so those are our products. Our reactants, we simply have liquid water. And so we, we drop out solids and liquids from our equilibrium expression. And while we're producing equal amounts of our acid and our base ions in this, this is also then called our KW, our ion product constant for water. We also said that Kw was equal to one times 10 to the negative 14th. And if we had equal amounts of our hydronium and our hydroxide, those would be one times 10 to the negative seventh, one times 10 to the negative seventh. And we can recognize that 14 is the top of our pH scale. And the ion product concentration of water identifies seven being neutral on the pH scale. So the next step in today's lesson is trying to look at these powers of 10 and putting them into a logarithmic function known as the pH scale. We like to use the pH scale because those values, one times 10 to the power, and we put them in whole numbers between zero to 14. The pH scale is a logarithmic function, putting a number that's quite small in terms of concentration units of acids and bases and puts them into a more manageable number to think about, a number between zero and 14. For pH scale, we're going to use negative log. So it's a convenient scale to turn small numbers into whole numbers. As the pH decreases, the hydrogen ion concentration increases exponentially. If we think about the pH scale being on a scale of zero to 14, with seven being neutral, and at seven, we have equal values of our hydronium and our hydroxide, one times 10 to the negative seventh, and this negative seven relating to neutral. If I go from a pH of seven to a pH of six, I've actually moved the exponent by a power of 10. So a pH of six is 10 times more acidic than a pH of seven. Something with a pH of five, two numbers on the decimal line, it's a hundred times more acidic than the pH of seven and so forth. A pH of four is a thousand times more acidic than a pH of seven. That's the power of 10 in a logarithmic function. So even the slightest swing of pH, it might seem small. So we've been really um, strict on significant digits, but there's one little exception here, and it's just kind of a chemistry rule, that let's say that we were given two significant digits um, with our concentration here, 1.0 times 10 to the negative eight, giving us a pH of 8.00. So even though we had two sig figs, we report our pH to two decimal places. 
So yes, this does have three significant figures, but it is really important that when we're reporting pH that we go to two decimal spots. Another piece that we need to be um, comfortable with is looking at pOH. So we're taking the negative log of the hydroxide ion to find the pOH. Next, let's look at some relationships. And I'm going to push this paper up here so that we have some more space to expand these relationships. So we know that we our first relationship, we're looking at kW. And we've written kW out numerous times. But kW, we can write as the relationship between our H plus and we H plus and H3O plus are used interchangeably. They're the same thing. It's our hydronium or hydrogen ion concentration. And we times that by our hydroxide ion concentration in the solution. And that's equal to kW. So our value for the equilibrium of the self-ionization of a water molecule. Water will self-ionize to form these two ions. And this is a constant. We know that this is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Now let's take the negative log of kW. And we're going to do the same to both sides. The negative log of H plus and OH minus. Now when I negative log, that's a math term called P. So here we have pH, pOH, pKa, pKb, pKw. Anytime you hear that little p, it's a mathematical thing. It's not even really chemistry, it's math. That means negative log. Now, algebra also tells us that when we have the negative log of two things, we have to separate them and actually add them. So we just distribute that log to both of these and then add them together. So now we can simplify this even more. And by taking the negative log of kW, again, we can simplify that and just call that p kW, because that's just definition of a mathematical relationship. And then we can set this equal to the negative log of h plus is now called pH. And we have the negative log of OH, which we then call pOH. So then, if we negative log our constant, take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14, we get 14. So we can just literally plug that into our calculator. If we do the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14, we get 14. So Negative log of pKW is 14, and that's a constant. And we can see that it results in giving us the sum of the pH and the pOH. So this helps me to determine if I know one of these values, I can find the other value. 14 minus one of these would give me the other. If I think about another relationship with just the power of 10, and you might want to put this just in your margin. I don't think I have a spot for it in the notes. If I wanted to turn a hydrogen ion concentration out of pH, that formula would be 10 raised to the negative pH. That's kind of manipulating the log formula, but... That just helps us get back from one to the other. And we can also manipulate and do the same thing. If we wanted to find our hydroxide ion concentration, we would do 10 to the negative pOH power. So if we have pH, pOH, concentration of the hydrogen ion or hydroxide ion, if I have just one of any of those values, one of any of those four, we can easily determine the other three and the relationships all just lie with the ion product constant, with the whole water ionization that give us equal quantities of hydrogen plus and hydroxide. So 
that just kind of gave us some extra room. I know that there wasn't that much space on your uh, notepad for that. So let's do our first practice problem. Um, we have a sample of lemon juice. The hydrogen ion concentration is 3.8 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. So this is my hydrogen ion concentration. What is the pH? So we're simply going to plug and chug when we know that pH is equal to the negative log of our H plus. Uh, so that would be 3.8 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we're just going to plug it into our calculator here. So we're going to say the negative log of 3.8 times 10 to the negative, oh, did I say 14? Goodness, negative 4. 3.8 times 10 to the negative 4. And remember our rule of going to two decimal places. So 3.42 would be my pH for this lemon juice. All right, let's do another practice problem. Commonly available window cleaning solution has an H plus of 5.3 times 10 to the negative nine. What is its pH? So again, we're gonna just plug it in to our negative log of our H plus 5.3, let's see if I get the exponent right this time, times 10 to the negative nine molar solution. And the negative log of 5.3 times 10 to the negative nine. And we would get at 8.28. And both of these seem to make sense. You know, lemon juice is acidic. And so it's in that pH range of three to four, so, and that is acidic, it's less than seven. And window cleaning, like Windex or ammonia, we know to be a basic solution. And this is greater than seven, so it would be a base. Good job. Let's look at the next problem. We're looking at apple juice, so it is acidic. It has a pH of 3.76. We want to know the concentration of H+. Plus of our hydronium ion concentration. And so we remember to find the pH, we need to do the, remember the H plus to find this is 10 to the negative pH. So we're just gonna plug in 10 to the negative 3.76. And when I do that in my calculator, 10 to the negative 3.76, and I should get 1.74 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's a big M for molarity. Its concentration is moles per liter. Now we also want to calculate our OH minus and POH as well. So remember that pH plus OH, I'm sorry, pH plus POH is equal to 14. And we know the pH of 3.76. So 3.76 plus our POH is equal to 14. So if we subtract 3.76 from both sides, we'll get our POH. So 14 minus 3.76, we should get 10.24. So our pOH is 10.24. And then to find our concentration of our hydroxide ion, we need to do the same thing that we did up here to find the concentration of our H plus ion. We're just going to do 10 to the negative pOH. So 10 to the negative 10.24, Then to the negative 9.24. We should get 5.75 times 10 to the negative 11. And that's a big M for molarity. And just to show that we did our calculations right, we don't have to do this, but remember how we said that our Hydrogen ion concentration 
inner hydroxide ion concentration, right? Our OH minus concentration that we just did right here. These two times one another is equal to one times 10 to the negative 14th, right? That's our constant for the auto ionization of water. If we plugged in these two numbers here, and we did 1.74 times 10 to the negative fourth, we times it by 5.75 times 10 to the negative 11. Notice that we get one times 10 to the negative 14th. So that just kind of shows the relationship where if I know one piece of information, I can find the other three. So as far as measuring pH, there's several different reasons to want to measure it. If you are interested in uh, the pH of your soil, if you're a gardener, or if you are interested in what your pH is in your pool or your hot tub. Um, and th really the easiest way to do this is by using a pH meter, a digital reader that um, allows, it just spits out the information to the nearest decimal points. Um, if you're just interested to see the pH as far as if it's acidic or basic, we can use an indicator. Like when we're titrating, if we use phenolphthalein and it's clear and then acid and then pink when it um, turns to a base. So we can use just litmus paper where if you um, stick this piece of paper into an acid, it turns a certain color, it turns red if it's acidic and blue if it's basic. Um, so all different ways to measure pH. If you want very specific, then you would obviously use the pH meter, the digital. If you're just looking for the indication, if you hit your um, titration point, then you can use an indicator. Now, when we start measuring the pH of solutions, we have to consider if we're measuring for strong acids or weak acids, strong bases or weak bases. To me, that's the difference between easy math or a little more complex math, setting up an equilibrium chart. Today's lesson is going to focus on strong acids. Tomorrow, focus on the weaks. Today, lessons are easy math. Tomorrow, we get to do the equilibrium problems. In terms of strong acids, you got to remember that 100% disassociates. No equilibrium, no ice charts, straightforward negative log. So how do we recognize if it is a strong So how do we know if it's a strong acid? Well, we need to be able to recognize which seven are the strongest. So we have three that are binary are hydrochloric, are hydrobromic, and hydroiodic. These are three binary. Binary meaning that there's two elements in these acids. We then have um, some more chloric. So there's actually three that chlorine is participated in. We have um, Let's see, we have hydrochloric, we have chloric acid, HClO3, and we have perchloric acid. And nitric acid is another monoprotic acid. And 100% of them disassociate when placed in water. Again, mono meaning one. Protic is our H pluses. Notice that each, uh, each one of these have one hydrogen. There's only one diprotic acid, and it's battery acid, H2SO4, or sulfuric acid. And so when we see these, any of these, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, chloric acid, perchloric acid, um, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, all of these seven completely 100% dissociate. So no equilibrium is established. It lies entirely to the right. And whatever I'm given as far as H plus concentration is my acid concentration. 
So let's look at an example. So let's calculate the pH of a strong acid. And again, right, I really like seeing the strong acid because that tells me easy math. We have 0.4 molar solution of perchloric acid. Again, because we know that's a strong acid. So we have HClO4 that is 100% disassociating into H plus and ClO4 minus. And so when we're told that we have a 0.4 molar solution for chloric acid, we know that it's going to 100% be our H plus concentration of 0 0.40 molar. So, so here all we have to do is plug and chug and do the negative log of 0 0.40 to get our pH. So let's plug it into our calculator here. The negative log of 0.4. And here, actually, we're going to, we want to go to two decimal spots. So 0.397 would round to 0 0.40. So the pH is equal to 0 0.40. Now that is really acidic. So this next one, if we have nitric acid with a pH of 2.34, again, we're going to go, yay, nitric acid is part of the strong seven club. Um, and we want to find the concentration of the acid. So we know that we have HNO3, that it's 100% disassociated into our H plus plus NO3 minus. And so when we take and we take 10 to the negative pH, to the negative 2.34, that's going to give us our H plus our concentration, which we also know is equal to the acid concentration because it's part of the strong acid club. So let's do 10 to the negative or 10 to the negative 2.34. We should get, uh, let's do this, 4.57 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3. Molarity. We could have also left that in standard form if you wanted to write 0 0.004. Six, if you wanted to run um, two significant fate. Well, we started with three, so I want to finish with three. Point zero zero four five seven. Either one of those is perfect. Now let's look at some examples of strong bases. There's relatively few of them, but What's really important to remember is that the hydroxide, the OH minus, is a really strong base, especially hydroxides of the alkali metals. The lithium, the sodium, the potassium, all those hydroxides, LiOH, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, they're all soluble in water. That is important. We don't want a hydroxide that's insoluble in water because then it's not even going to come out of solution. Some other ones that are um, also strong, hydroxides of the heavier alkaline earth metals. Specifically, strontium hydroxide and uh, barium hydroxide. And now calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble. You can count it as either or. Um, definitely depends on the conditions. Like if I had really, 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 really hot water and I 
put a stirring stick in there that was stirring it, you know, very viciously, um, we can get it to um, separate. Uh, but if I use room temperature tap water, then it's gonna just float there. But um, either you can count it as either or. But anyways, so strontium and barium are the most common strong bases. Anybody in the alkali metals, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium, we will mostly be um, talking about sodium and potassium hydroxide, those are the most common. Um, so those are definitely strong bases. So those are, all of these are our OH negative last names. These are all our hydroxide strong bases and they all go by solubility rules, right? We don't want um, one that's insoluble because then it's not going to dissociate into these ions. It's gonna stay solid, just like we learned when we were doing our net ionic equations. Um, other strong bases, um, contain the oxide ion. Metal oxides, especially sodium oxide, calcium oxide, are often used in industry when a strong base is needed. So for example, if we were to um, look at oxide here, O2 negative, and we're just gonna leave the sodium off because we know that that's soluble and it will turn into um, Na plus ion. But if we did that, any either of these, and we add it, put them in a the solution or, uh, uh, with water, What's gonna happen here is similar to what happened before when this bond is going to break and cleave and that oxygen is going to attach to the O over here. So then my products are gonna be OH negative and OH negative. So I'm actually getting twice the amount of hydroxides when this happens. And we did an example problem like this the other day where we looked at um, conjugate pairs. And so the NaO conjugate pairs would be OH and my water's conjugate pair here would be the OH. So let's look at an example problem. Let's say that we have a solution formed by dissol dissolving 0 0.01 moles of sodium oxide Na2O in enough water to form a liter of solution. What is the OH negative? So in this case, I'm gonna just cross off Na because we know that Na is just going to be a spectator ion on both sides. So we can just cross it off for the chemistry purpose of it. So we just are gonna be using it, looking at O2 negative. And I have 0.01 molar of it, right? Because that divided by one is 0.01, it's itself. And we also know that when this happens, that we're left with, um, this oxygen is going to steal one of the hydrogens from the water to make OH, and then we're left with one less H here, so OH negative. So when I'm starting with here, and remember, we're going to end up with twice as much quantity in my product. So to find out our hydroxide value, we need to double, so two times 0 0.01 molar to get 0 0.02 molar for my hydroxide concentration. So with that, we know the OH concentration is 0 0.02 molar. Now to find the pOH, we just need to do the negative log of 0 0.02. And that should give us the negative log of 0 0.02. I'm going to round that to 1.70. So pOH is 1.70. Then We need to remember that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So if we know the pOH is 1.70, I need to subtract that from both sides to get my pH. So 14 minus 1.70, 1.70. 
and we should get a pH of 12.3. And actually, 12.30 because we want to go to that second decimal point. Some other examples, we can look at hydrides and nitrides that also react with water to form hydroxides. And a hydride, I know this kind of looks like an O, it's not. It's H negative is hydride. It's the negative um, negative hydrogen. And nitride, again, that's N minus 3. And so looking at this, if I am um, combining hydride into water, what we actually get is this hydrogen cleaves off one of the H's, the hydrogens from water to make H2 gas, and then we're left with an OH, a hydroxide. Now nitride is kind of interesting because, let's draw on a piece of paper here. If we look at nitrogen, and we were to draw its Lewis dot structure, it has five outermost electrons. So to make nitride, N minus three, it wants to grab three more electrons here. So what's it gonna do? It's going to take a, when nitride is placed in water, it's going to grab this hydrogen to fill that vacancy. It's going to grab another hydrogen to fill that vacancy, and grab another hydrogen to fill that vacancy. So it's gonna grab three H's, which makes NH3. You should be familiar with this, this is ammonia. And then on top of that, if one NH3 also made one, two, three hydroxides, three OH minuses. So we need to keep that in mind, the stoichiometry value of this, that one nitride is going to give us triple the amount of hydroxides. Similar to what we did up here, when we looked at one oxide created two hydroxides. So let's look at an example here. I have 0.028 molar solution of NaOH. So if I look at NaOH, and it's going to 100% dissociate, I'm going to have my Na plus and OH minus. So I have a one-to-one -one ratio here. So if I'm starting with 0.028 molar, I'm going to end with 0.028 molar, that one-to-one -one ratio. So then I can just plug it into my negative log of 0.028. And remember, that's going to give me my pOH because I'm looking at my hydroxide concentration here. So let's plug this in and see what we get. A negative log 0.028, we get 1.55. So my pOH, 1.55. But I want my pH. So now we just need to do a little flipping around because we know that pOH plus pH is equal to 14. So I just need to do 14 minus my answer and I should get 14 minus 1.55 and I should get 12.45 is equal to the pH. All right, let's look at another one. We have calcium hydroxide, and we know that this is a strong base. So we've got CaOH2 is going to dissociate into one Ca2 plus and two hydroxide minuses. So if I have 0.0011, we know that I'm going to have two, twice that quantity of 
my hydroxide. So I would need to do two times 0 0.0011, which is two times 0 0.0011. So I have 0 0.0022 molar for my hydroxide. And then we're going to take the negative log of that of 0 0.0022 to get my pOH. So the negative log of my answer, I got 2.66 for my pOH. And remember, I want to do 14 minus 2.66 to get my pH. So 14 minus my answer, I should get 11.34. pH of 11.34. All right, how are you feeling about that? Are you getting the same answers? Let's look at this next problem. We want the concentration of, the, of a solution of potassium hydroxide. So let's write down Potassium hydroxide is going to, it's a strong base, it's going to dissociate completely into its potassium and hydroxide ions, and it's all a one-to-one -one ratio here. So we're given that the pH is 11.89. We also can figure out what the pOH is here, right? We can do 14 minus 11.89 to get my pOH. Let's do that, 14 minus 11.89. So I got a pOH of 2.11. Now I can find the concentration of my OH by just doing 10 to the negative 2.11. And that will give me my OH hydroxide ion concentration. So let's do that here real quick. 10 to the negative to the negative 2.11.0078. Write that down. 0 0.0078 molar is equal to my hydroxide ion concentration. Well, because of this stoichiometry, we know that my hydroxide ion concentration is a one-to-one -one, um, stoichiometric value. So we can say that this is also equal to my KOH of the solution. So we can say the KOH concentration is the same, 0 0.0078 molar. All right, let's do one more here. So we've got calcium hydroxide, and the pH is 11.68. So let's write out CaOH2. Again, is going to dissociate to Ca2 plus plus two OH minuses, right? One calcium, two hydroxides. Okay, so we know the pH is 11.68. So let's find our pOH. Again, that's 14 minus 11.68. And I got 2.32. So now let's find our OH concentration, which is 10 to the negative 2.32. And that's going to give us 10 to the negative 2.32, which is 0 0.0048 molarity. That is for my hydroxide concentration here. Now again, that's for two hydroxides. So how do I get my solution concentration? Well, it's a two to one ratio. So I could write it like this, 0, 0, 4, 8 molarity for my two OHs. This is for OHs. We know that there are two OH minuses for every one CaOH2. All right, so we just need to take this number. We need to just divide it by two. So divided by two should give me a concentration of 0 0.0024 molar 